Hello and good morning. How's everybody doing? It's nice to be back. It's nice to be making yoga classes again and with passion too. I'm, I'm feeling the drive to do it again. And it was really simple to get to this point. I just decided that this is actually what I want to do. And it feels good. So, um, so like I've said in the previous episode, um, the way I teach is through intuition. And so I don't have plans. I don't make plans. I have maybe um, a background intention of doing this class for this reason, or have a certain person in mind do the class for them. So um, I've made a couple classes now, and they actually have lined up pretty perfectly with pe people's requests um, after the fact. So, but I'd like to practice setting an intention for myself to teach for another person. Because really, this is this is a practice to benefit myself. I am learning to drop into flow state to connect with the silence that is within all of us, within everything, and teach out of that, channel out of that. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm still teaching. I have plenty of knowledge and know-how and experience. I have to, you know, I'm translating. That's kind of how I see it. I'm translating what the channel, what the download, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, let's, so if you have any, uh, requests, just drop it in the comments. An area of the body, nothing too specific. I can't guarantee certain poses because I don't know what's going to happen. And that's kind of the beauty of this. But the aim of this class is hips. It's an easy one for me because I love the hips. Looking at them and working in them. <laughs> and doing yoga in them. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Um, so, let's have a block. I'm gonna have my half block, it's my favorite, because I don't need a whole lot of support. A block, the purpose of a block is to bring the ground higher to you. So if you don't need that, like this is not comfortable for some people. Some people need to sit on the block, you know? Anyway, uh, so I have a block, have a, this is really the main prop we need, but let's have a blanket as well, because you never know, you never really know what could happen, so I'm going to put my blanket right there, firmer is better, and a strap, if you like, um, a strap, very definitely, I'm not going to grab one, because I don't want to go rummage for one. There's probably one in my closet over there, but anyway, let's get started. Thanks everyone for joining. Now first we are figuring out, finding out if we need to sit on a block for certain poses. So this is a good way to tell, just sitting with the legs out long in front, the legs flat against the ground, straight knees, extended knees, and then a tall spine. And if you cannot sit with a tall spine here, if you are slouching or if you're feeling your hamstrings, then sit, fold your blanket, and sit on it, or take your block, sit on it or double them up, you know, block and blanket. So the importance of having this tall spine here is that if we're moving into twists from here, there's a, there's a pose that I really like that I generally, my body likes to go towards, um, you know, where we're twisting. And if we don't have a tall spine, 
then the vertebrae are not going to twist evenly. When you rotate your spine, it's each vertebrae doing a little more of a twist. So you get this full rotation throughout the whole of the 27 vertebrae. Correct me if I'm wrong, 27. And so this is Dandasana, taking the hands by the hips, pressing down with the hands, pressing down with the backs of the knees, lifting the sternum, spreading the collarbones, stretching the neck up, extending the skin of the tops of the feet and the tips of the toes towards the sky, stretching and extending the skin along the shins and the thighs, down and up, spreading the backs of the knees. Gaze ahead and just breathe here for just a moment. Notice all these subtle little adjustments. Great, release the arms. Bend the right knee and place the left foot on, or the left ankle on the, uh, okay, hold on. Bend the right knee, place the right ankle on the left thigh. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> With an inhale, lift the knee. Exhale, lower the knee. So simple. Warming up the hip. One more. Okay, now, holding the right knee and the left and the right foot with both hands, point the right finger. And this is going to be our drawing apparatus. We're going to be drawing a big circle. Okay? So with an inhale, rotate the knee up. Exhale, rotate it down. Inhale up, exhale down, drawing a circle in the sky with the pointer. One more in this direction. And reverse, inhaling back and up, exhale forward and down. Or whatever the reverse is, is what you've been doing. One more. Inhale the knee back up and take the leg out long. Now before we move to the other side, we are resetting, realigning the knee joint. So pull the knee into the chest and straighten it back out. Simple. <clears throat> take the other side. Left knee bends, left ankle on right thigh. Hey, I did it that time without fucking with the words. <clears throat> without the words fucking with me. With an inhale, <clears throat> lift the knee, lower the knee, exhale. Inhale, exhale, feeling into the left hip. Just notice how this sensation feels in the hip socket. One more. Okay. Taking that left pointer finger, pointing it out from the, from the left knee, with an inhale, rotate up, exhale, down, inhale, exhale. One more. Reverse directions, inhaling forward up, Coming back and down, or whatever the reverse. One more. Great. Back to center, bring the leg out long. Again, bend the left knee into the chest and back out. That resets the knee. That's important. <clears throat> Okay, let's come onto our hands and knees and move into some cat cows to help warm up the spine as always very, very important pose in my opinion. <clears throat> Probably why all the yoga teachers use it. <clears throat> so spread the fingers really wide, as wide as you can spread them. Feel the 
surface area of the fingers on the mat, the palms on the mat, and the space between the bones and knuckles. Pressing down into the thumb side of the palms. Okay. Knees under hips. <clears throat> With an inhale, pull the shoulders back, press the heart down towards the mat. Lift the chin and the gaze. Exhale, round the spine. Navel contracts. Shoulder blades broad. Inhale. Shoulders back. Heart forward. Chin lifts. Exhale. Round the spine. Navel squeezing towards the spine. Continue with your breath. Navel squeezing on the exhale, expanding on the inhale. Pelvic floor lifting on the exhale, expanding on the inhale. One more round. Inhale to drop the belly, curl the toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Come forward to your hands to your uh, high push-up and make it comfortable with the distance of the hands and the feet. Okay, keeping the hands and feet where they are with an exhale, downward facing dog. Now taking the right foot and stepping it over the left foot. Breathing here. Feeling the outside of the right leg. Outside of the right hip. Press the left hip back and feel the outside of the left leg. The outside of the left hip. Come back to center. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale back to down dog. One more time. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Step the left foot over the right foot. Feel the outside of the left leg and left hip. Roll the right hip back and up, outside of the right leg and right hip. And return to center. <clears throat> Bring the knees down as wide as the mat, touch the big toes together behind you and sit the hips back, child's pose. In child's pose, just wiggle the hips a little bit, shifting the weight, pushing on one knee and the other. And just feel how that feels in the hips. This, in fact, is one of the best hip openers, in my opinion. Keeping the knees wide, walk your hands up to a seat. If this is comfortable and you can take your knees wider, feel free to do. If this is comfortable and you can sit between the ankles on the mat, please do. If not, you can take your block and sit on it, take your blanket, fold it up, sit on it. Feel the base of the pelvic floor, the center of the pelvic floor on the mat, on your block or on your blanket. Slight pressure.
Notice how every inhale, the pelvic floor wants to move down. Every exhale, subtly moves up. This pose it, in and of itself is a great way to become connected with our Mula Bandha, which is the energy lock of the root chakra, Muladhara, the pelvic floor area. So between the perineum and the anus is a cross of muscles called, uh, sorry, between the genitals and the anus, a cross of muscles called the perineum right at the center of that cross. That is Muladhara. That is where the root energy lock is. If you can't quite feel it or you need more sensitivity, you can take something small, very small and soft, or um, smooth, and place it right at that cross. <laughs> And again, and then on the inhales, just notice the pressure downward, and on the exhale, the pressure upward. The pelvic floor is like a second diaphragm. How on our inhale, our diaphragm moves down, on our exhale, it moves up. Same thing with the pelvic floor, same with, thing with the soles of the feet, same thing with the soft palate and the roof of the mouth. Okay, now. Let's come out of this. Take the legs forward. <clears throat> and now let's come into a little squat. This is a good time for your block. If you need it, you can sit on it. Personally, I do not. It's basically if you can't bring heels all the way down in your squat, this just means that this area needs some more opening more mobility, it's a little stiff, and then the hips could be also stiff in this. <clears throat> However, this is a good practice to open those up. So, the, <clears throat> the elbows are inside the knees, and you're grasping under the arches of the feet with the fingers, the thumbs are on top. One second. And the feet are about hip width distance, maybe a little wider, the toes slightly out, okay? And so see how far forward my shoulders are coming towards you? Press them back, and you'll feel the pressure of the elbows into the knees, okay? This is the inhale. Lift the heart, spread the collarbones, lift the gaze. Exhale, straighten the knees, and fold over the legs. Straighten the knees as much as you can, tucking the chin. Inhale. Returning to the starting position. Shoulders back, collarbones spread. Exhale, straighten the knees. Inhale. We'll do ten total. So that was two. This is wind releasing pose. Perhaps some of you already know why. And this is five. One more. This time we're going to fold and stay in the fold.
facing the front of the mat if you're not already. I was because I was facing you, obviously. Turn the toes in so the inside edges of the feet are parallel. We're going to move into a few sun salutations. We're already partly, partway into one, so with an inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Hands to heart center on the exhale. Great. Okay. So these, if you're familiar with sun citations, these might be a little different. We're going to do um, something with a lunge. We're going to add a lunge in. So let's get to it, though. Of course, you can pause and rewind. This is the beauty of an online video. You ready? OK, I'm ready. With an inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back. Drop the knee. Inhale, lift the heart, pull the shoulders back, fingertips grazing the earth. Exhale, take the hands down, step the, f the back foot, the front foot forward, Jesus, left foot. And now we're in downward facing dog. With your next inhale, one full movement, step the right foot forward, plant the back knee, lift the heart and shoulders back, and exhale, step the back foot to meet the front foot, folding over. Inhale halfway, exhale, fold. Inhale all the way. Hands to heart center. Okay, let's do that. Nice and smooth. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, halfway, exhale, step the left foot back, plant the knee, inhale, shoulders back, heart lifts, gaze, exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back, downward facing dog, breathe here. With your next inhale, right foot comes back forward. No, wait, I'm sorry. Just go back to downward facing dog. Okay, with your inhale, left foot, foot comes forward. Drop the back knee, shoulders back, heart lifts. Exhale, plant the hands, step the back foot forward. Inhale halfway. Exhale. Inhale all the way. Hands to heart center. So the tricky thing about this one, this sun salutation, is that with one round, the same foot moves back and then forward going into the lunge. That always messes me up. <laughs> Let's see if it cannot. Okay, ready? Inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. Right foot back. Knee planted. Inhale. And exhale, plant the hands. Left foot back. Downward facing dog for two breaths. Inhale, right foot forward. Plant the back knee, heart lifts. Exhale, step the back foot forward. Fold. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way. Hands to heart center. Okay, we'll do one more with the left foot moving. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step the left foot back. Inhale, shoulders back, heart lifts. Exhale, right foot back. Two breaths. Inhale. 
Inhale, left foot forward. Drop the back knee, pull the shoulders back, lift the heart. Exhale, step the back foot to meet the front foot. Fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way. Hands to heart center, exhale. Great. Now let's come down. <clears throat> to a seat on the heels. So something you'll learn about my classes is I'm not here to push you. I don't see the point. These classes are more about awareness and when you force yourself so so intensely. Hold a pose for so, so long, the mind gets agitated. We do not want that. Okay. So, now it's time for a nice little twist. Yes, I think so. So there's two options for this twist. Um, I will show you this way, <clears throat> so you can see. So, I can't remember the name of this. I'm never good at remembering to tell you the names of poses that we're doing. So call it what you want. So you take the sit, the sit bones and you seat them off to the side. And then the left, um, I guess I'm mirroring you, so the right ankle comes on top of the left foot and the left foot points out that way. Like so. And we're aiming to have both hips, both sit bones on the mat, but I never can. Um, the variation of this is you take the foot into half lotus, the top foot. This is much more manageable to keep the sit bones down, in my opinion. I guess I'll face this way now, okay? Now, the hand opposite to the foot on top. Um, so right now you should have your sit bones to the left. So <clears throat> the right hand. Sometimes my brain does not work at mirroring. So take that right hand and flip it so that the fingers go underneath this outside thigh. Underneath, underneath the left thigh. <clears throat> And then the left arm comes around the back and grasps the foot. If your foot is under like this, right hand under the left thigh, palm towards the ground, then you're reaching for the arm. And then the gaze comes over the right shoulder. I guess I'll stay here, because this is where I am. Pull the shoulder blades together. Lengthen through the spine. Reach both sit bones for the earth. Gaze is soft. Breathe. And release and come back. Probably. 
probably one of the most subtly powerful twists out there. Let's do the other side. So again, we can start seated on the ankles and then sit the hip, the sit bones to the right. The right foot comes underneath the left ankle or the right foot comes on top of the left thigh in half lotus. Is that making sense? Please, if any of these poses don't make sense to you, if it's hard to tell what I'm doing, let me know in the comments. It would be really helpful actually for me and for you. So the left hand, now the fingers go underneath the right thigh, palm on the ground. <coughs> or at least moving towards the ground. Mine is not on the ground. My knuckles are on the ground, but not the palm. Reaching around the back, and you can just grasp the thigh or the hip, or if your shoulders are not so open, you can just take the hand behind the back. This is fine. However, the full pose would be grabbing the arm. Lift the low belly by pulling the navel back towards the spine and up towards the heart. Shoulder blades together. Gaze over the left shoulder. Eyes are soft. Tongue is soft. Breathing. And releasing when you're ready. These fingers are like, why did you do that? Be gentle. This is a really extreme opener for the fingers. Ooh. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Turning back forward. Let's just take the hands back, rest for a moment, and just see where we're at. Take the elbows down. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the knees are bent, soles of the feet close to the buttocks. Notice where the hips are. See how this is forward, this is back. You're either on your tailbone or you're on the backs of the sit bones. So let's move somewhere in between the tailbone and the backs of the sit bones and then lift the feet. Inhale the, left, the right foot out, exhale in. Be slow, be conscious of your movement other foot. The head is slightly back, so the, nin the neck isn't crunchy. Keeping the legs up, inhale to straighten the knees. Exhale to bend. 
Inhale to straighten. Exhale to bend. Three more. Last one. Take the soles of the feet together and come back up. <clears throat> Sit up nice and tall here. And press the feet into one another. Close the eyes, breathe here. Feel the sensation in the hip joints, hip sockets as you press the feet into one another. Allow the mind to grow calm, detach from any thought. If it comes, just acknowledge it, hello thought, and move on. No need to be taken by the story the mind wants to produce. Okay, take the knees, close them like a book. Legs out long in front. This is a good time for your strap. We're gonna do Hashimotanasana. <clears throat> but we'll do it with some movement, so. This is such an awesome hip opener, actually, because if you think about it, your hamstrings are, they attach right here. And then go up the backs of the legs and up into the um, hips. Mm -hmm. So this, the hamstrings are part of the hips. So if you're stretching the hamstrings, you're opening the hips. Then the hip flexors come up and attach right about here. So when you're opening the low back, you're getting the hips. And that's what you're doing here. You're opening the back and the hamstrings. So the, the muscles that move through the hips. This is a really awesome hip opener for that reason. So you can take your strap and wrap it onto the feet. I'll use my imaginary strap until we get further into it. <clears throat> or you can grasp the toes if you are comfortable enough just straight off doing that. I'm gonna use my invisible strap for now. You can also take the fingers to the mat. Um, with an inhale, sit up nice and tall, pull the shoulders back. And again, I'll give you a moment, actually, if you need to sit on a block or a blanket. Sit up nice and tall, spread the collarbones, lift the sternum, shoulder blades into the back, lift and open the diaphragm. With your next exhale, fold about 25% in, walking your hands closer on the strap. Now I will grab my toes. Keeping that extension in the front of the body. Breathing. Opening the backs of the knees down towards the mat. Spreading from the center to the sides horizontally and spreading from the base vertically. With your next exhale, another 25%. And here we will breathe. Close the eyes and feel the sensations. 
As you feel the sensations, relax into them and breathe deeply, smoothly, with control. If this is too much, please back out just a little bit. Enough so that you're feeling it, but it's not overwhelming. That's the key here when we're opening the hamstrings and opening any part of the body, to not be overwhelmed. To just feel it. It's like moving into fear. You just feel it a little bit, and you can move into it. But if you're overwhelmed by fear, you will get nowhere. And if you feel more relaxed and more open, you can go a little further. Again, keep that length in the front of the body. The, the length in the front of the body not only protects the back from overarching, it protects, it uh, allows for more opening in the hips, and that is what we are going for. We're not going to open the back here. We're going to open the hips. And the back and the hamstrings will follow. Now notice wherever you are, if you're starting to feel, or if you have been feeling anything in the hips, in the outside, the back, the inside, Let's do three more breaths, okay? You got this. This used to be my least favorite pose, and now it is, oh my god, my favorite. With your next inhale, come back up. Take the hands back, fingers facing forward. You like my alliteration there? Fingers facing forward. Okay, feet are together, knees are together. With an inhale, we will lift our hips. And exhale down. Let's do five of those total. So inhale, lift, collarbones broad, belly to the sky, Fing toes trying to touch the mat, and down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Two more. Last one. Excellent. Lay to the back. Interlace the fingers behind the head, keeping the knees bent, soles of the feet on the mat. With your exhale, drop the knees to the right. Be gentle. Inhale to center. Exhale to the left. Inhale to center. We'll go back and forth with the breath. We're not trying to have an extreme twist here. We just had an extreme forward fold, so just even out the back here. Not too far, just enough to come to balance. Coming back to center. <clears throat> and we're moving into a final pose of bridge. So with your inhale, lift the hips. Exhale to lower the hips. 
We'll do a few, few bits of movement before we hold it. Inhale up. Exhale down. One more. And this time inhale, lift and hold. Roll the shoulders under. The heart puffs. The collarbones puff and broaden. The chin lifts away from the chest. Hug the inner thighs towards one another. Feel the state. Feel the sacrum stabilizing. Focus the gaze. Feel the breath. Three more breaths. coming down and take the legs out long for Shavasana.
Begin to deepen the breath. And bringing movement back to the body. And when you're ready, roll to one side and come to a seat. Thank you for joining today. Namaste. So, if you like these classes, there are more to come. If you like my teaching style, if you like um, the things that I have said, the way that I have said them, if you want to hear more, read more, see more from me, then check out my website, ryanmichaelyoga.org. And like I said at the beginning, um, if you have any requests, hit me up. Put them in the comments. Go to my website, send me a message. Um, otherwise, I would appreciate it hit the share button uh, well the subscribe button but the share button too um, and a like and um, yeah I hope you have a great day thanks for watching